Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it's Emmet here, and welcome back to the analyzing and reacting series on the channel to all the world records of Mario Kart Wii. This is very, very special. These are the 2008 world records, and if you've seen the recent world records in recent years, you're in for a lot of surprises, especially if you weren't around back then. A lot of older players that aren't around anymore, but I kind of know the backstory for a lot of things, so sit back, relax, get a little drink, maybe a snack, this one is going to be a great one. So, shout out to Pierpont here. Many of you guys may not know, but before Cole made the Mario Kart World Records site, uh, Pierpont actually started pioneering the um, the overall initiative to be documenting our game's history and then eventually all of the different games' world record history. And um, he was a master in LC for the longest time. And the battles here were always so nostalgic. We had Pierpont, we had J-Boy, had the Goss here, we had Bubbles. A lot of different notable names and um the most recent you know development in recent years here is doing the wheelie cut now where it basically helps to preserve your speed boost outside of the shroom if you see here he drops to literally like 50 60 kmh and that loses a lot of time so the roll record has been improved by less than one second believe it or not in 13 years it's kind of crazy i know but um i get so much nostalgia just watching this time and um, a lot of these records that will be in this video I actually recorded myself. A lot of these records have not been recorded in HD like this before. So I could have reacted to all of like the very, very first, like very first um, documented roll records, but half of them may not have videos and not the best quality. So these are the current roll records as of December 31st of 2008. So about eight months time, it's going to be really funny to see what strats are known at the time and what the driving tech was back in the day. Shoutouts to my boy Kioni, my old clanmate in the clan unity. Kioni is one of the best players in 2008. He pioneered a lot of things, especially this historic world record here, where he was the one that changed Moo Moo Meadows of being a spear track to being a flame runner track, and it never went back to recent day. And um, this was a huge historic time. And I still remember being uh, in a chat client called Ven Ventrilo, I think it's called. Uh, back in 2008, we were always time trialing together, and he was way, way ahead of his time. Just a lot of any guess what the strat that he goes for is still honestly pretty mind blowing in like today's standards. Um, you know, obviously the roll record now is close to two seconds faster now. Of course, the the low jump, most notably on the ramp, is the, like, the biggest change here. Instead of this going right to the ramp and having a giant high trick, but literally hitting these point sixes, what he goes for is literally insane. I, he's uh, my old clanmate. I'm biased, but he was sincerely ahead of his time, and this this really shook the foundation for the community on this trap because it was a spear trap for the longest longest time, and using the spear here is so unbelievably hard, especially in the beginning of 2008. Everyone struggled, including myself. So this made everyone's life a lot easier using an easier vehicle to use and uh, never changed back ever since then. So um, I was smile on my face, uh, rightfully so, uh, watching my old clanmates time. And uh, yeah, quite a historic movement here when he set this record. You might see his name one more time, I think, on GV2 in this video. Mushroom Gorge, we have a 144.551. And what's really funny about all of this is literally, um, I think only Mushroom Gorge and Grumble Volcano had glitches known in 2008. And then BC3 Shortcut. Apart from that, you know, like Mario Circuit Tree Clip and like Wario's Goldmine and everything else, those were known for quite a while. So it's just very charming to see where everything started off with and how fast people could, pro uh, could progress. Um, I believe this was his player's only roll record here on the Nogler side of things. Um, what, was, what was a little bit weird is that um, official like no glitch, no shortcut charts weren't exactly made for probably at least, I don't know, it was probably mid to late 2010, 2011. So trying to retroactively try and find who had the fastest time in 2008 is honestly quite hard. It's been quite the task. There's been a lot of players on the players page who've tried uh, digging endlessly for these signs and shout outs to all of you. Uh, because, you know, documenting our game's history is very, very important. And, um, you know, the world record now is literally, I think, almost four seconds faster. So 140.7. There is the, the mushroom skip here that they don't do. There is the, the task room that they do. 
um, really optimized driving, drifting tricks on the shrooms as well to reduce airtime, a lot of other uh, big optimizations. So um, even still getting a mid 144, honestly, is not that bad, especially for 2008. It's honestly very good. Um, yeah, it, oh man, did this, this time period was so great. What was, um, you know, at least for me personally speaking and a lot of other players, it's like the main rankings, like on the players page, like it only counted like this glitch time on Mushroom Gorge and Grumble Volcano. So we didn't like really grind the no glitch driving here uh, as much. Um, so like we had to kind of learn in years past how to drive a little bit better, you know? But uh, Dark on the glitch side of things, Dark is a legend. He had the world record here several times. I think his last world record here was like a low 42 second time, I think. And uh, literally the world second of the, <laughs> the world record is literally less than half this time now. It's almost 19 seconds. This is like 43 seconds. It's not using the quacker. It's using Daisy mock bike. There's no turning around the mountain and never had going back in the track. This was the old tried and true mushroom gorge glitching strategy. And they used the Wii wheel, which you have the full directional input with the Wii wheel as well, which makes the, the mountain ride far easier compared to the other controller schemes and trying to do this as well. And uh, this was always very tricky for me too. Um, these times are very underrated. I think the most optimized mock bug time before like the, the mountain spin around strat was a thing. It was probably like a very low 40 second time. And that was pretty optimized for what it was. So that was still very good for 2008. Uh, as my mind was blown trying to record this. Um, very, very impressive. My old clan mate as well, Brendan. Shout out to Brendan. You're going to see his name a couple of times here. He had the roll record on Toad's Factory. Also, humongous shout outs right now to Mindscarp. Um, he was one of the main players who really paved the way for documenting and recording the roll record history uh, since the start in 2008. And so um, a lot of the records here that don't have any ghost data because it's hard to, you know, people probably stole their weeds or didn't download all these times because things were changing so fast. So all the times I had ghost data, I recorded myself in HD quality and everything else, I put the proper credits and everything. So humongous shout out to Mindscarp because he has truly done the work way back in the day to really preserve uh, the, the beginning works of uh, documenting a world market history here and it was always like uh, a crowd event you know your crowning achievement you get the world record and then uh Minecraft records your video and this was pristine hd back in the day um you know 480p 720p and stuff like that it was like the the most hype thing in the world um and brendan is the former number one overall time trialer of the game one of the most talented players to have ever graced our game he had world record on probably what 10 plus tracks in his in his prime and uh the battles here man with brendan and sro oh man that's one of the best battles uh way back in the day um especially as they were chasing down trying to get the first 151 i believe actually i think both brendan and sro they tied e each other twice i believe um i believe mindscarp has at least one video where he has like a split screen side by side just to compare them and it's really cool. Um, the notion of ties was always super cool to me, especially back in the day. And seeing them kind of split screen like that was really cool as well. So, um, you know, the world record now is a couple of seconds faster. They do the shroomless cut. They do the shroom at the boxes. So uh, also the low jump wasn't known back then as well, but still almost 151. So very, very impressive. We have Mario Circuit now. There's no glitch category. Shadow still the glitch times on the leaderboards. What Nintendo would do, they would delete their times, but sometimes the times wouldn't go away. But when you download the world record ghost, it would download the le legitimate time. So um, I feel like most of you guys watching right now, you know, you might have had the game as you're a kid and you're like, oh, how did they get like a three millisecond time? What the heck? And that was why. So they uh, half the time mess up the leaderboards. It was a very common thing back in the day. Um, but there are still means to get the actual world record ghost. Um, huge shout outs to Camo. I, I believe he was the first 121 here on Mary Circuit. He got that like in early, like 2009, if I'm pretty sure if my memory serves me right. And he was such a titan of like the spear tracks back in the day. I think he had a very good time on both Luigi Circuit and I believe on Peach Beach as well back in the day. And um, he was above and beyond, far beyond his time here um, on Mary Circuit. 
So this was way before, you know, the, the two shimmer strategy right here where you kind of go behind the trees and everything before that was known. It was just one, one, one. You're trying to avoid the chain chomp cycles on lap three, just a lot of things. And, um, you know, there's no like King Alex low ramp, you know, you're going beside it, not even going for it at all, not even entertaining it whatsoever. And look at that, he barely, barely misses out on hanging the chain chomp. So even back in 2008 with the strats that were known, there were uh, pace locks, believe it or not, back in the day. But that's where the new strats come in with 2-1-0 and, uh, or 3-0-0, either or, to get the job done. Humongous shoutouts to Yasha as well. 158, 798 in 2008. Literally a 158 with these super ancient strats in 2008 is really, really mind-blowing. Um, the roll marker now is a little bit over three seconds faster with a plethora of new strats, if you guys have seen the roll marker these days. There are these tricks off like the, the plant things, the banisters, triple zipper strategies, uh, even more optimization of the shroom, everything else. Um, it's a vastly different lo looking record in recent day. But Yasha, I feel like he he got his proper credit almost the entire time, but no one really, like, very few people really, like, give him the real credits of just how advanced of a player he was. I still wish he, like, fully applied himself to, like, all the tracks. I feel like he only seriously played maybe... Oh, he almost hit the ceiling. <laughs> um, I feel like he only really fully applied himself to perhaps, like, 10, 12 tracks at the most, he really could have done like supreme damage on like the entire game, but he was beyond dominant on all the tracks he would play. You're gonna see his name again later on in this video as well in Jungle Parkway. But um, it's just so crazy to see where the strats were back in the day and what was known and what was not. Um, I actually helped to implement the new strategy on lap three, taking the banister on the right hand side. Um, I was pretty on high and worldwide tops myself. Um, I see it a lot of time in my lap threes as a result. And um, it's just so funny to see them still going to the left escalator because that loses just so much time compared to what we do now. And you go to the zipper over here, you're not doing the uh, planter tricks uh, in the middle of the road. Just so many things that are so different. But um, it's very, very charming just to see this again. I still can't believe the 158 in 2008 that that's still fairly solid for you know a uh, intermediate uh player these days with like the recent strats so very insane time we have the legend wyvern also we see daniel there we see um 29g all the old greats of dk summit the battles here were historic especially uh, american player daniel um i believe his youtube is called ddr master dan and he had the most epic videos he would make of his battles with like a uh, wyvern hahi 29g uh some other notable players too and he literally kind of like documented like his progress like almost like a a little battle every time it was the coolest thing and there's still really a lot of fun to watch today um clearly the landscape of dk summit is way different now the roll record compared to what this is right now is almost six plus seconds faster. And they do what's known as the quote unquote Jimmy cut now, where you basically go full send, drift off the first chasm, do a perfectly high time hop on the second chasm and maintain your boost all the way across the second gap as well. And, um, you know, further optimizations of the low tricks before the shroom and trying to optimize these mound tricks as well. Um, they are very tricky, even by today's standards. But, um, you know, the double cut was known in 2008 and a lot of people struggled learning the double, um, uh, the double cut, um, back in 2008 and 2009. Um, it was even far more apparent back then. If you knew some of these, uh, strategies, you would win almost every way, every race in online races and also wars and stuff. Um, cause people sometimes would just default just doing like the single cut as an example. But, um, man, it's just so weird just to see, like, where this was in 2008 because even with the strats that Wyvern goes for, a low 151 is still very impressive for what he actually goes for. Um, these players were so far advanced with their times way back in the day, and not many people really uh, know it or were around to see it when it was happening like myself.
Shoutouts to another clan mate of mine, Bubbles. Uh, this track is freaking epic for Bulwark of History, obviously on the glitch side, but also the no glitch side. Um, the battle was Throw and Bubbles and Rex as well. Uh, MVT, all the notable players there. Um, it was so much fun. I believe, I think Bubbles was the one that actually discovered the wall bounce technique, um, which I think he may do in this run over here. Um, where basically you're doing uh, a down trick and at the very end of like the trick rotation, you're being propelled forward by the invisible wall. And um, it may not seem like uh, a big detail, but it actually can save a considerable amount of time per lap. And as far as my memory serves me right, I believe Bubbles was the one to discover that strategy. And um, it's just so crazy because I think in the, in the first week of 2009, um, Sro hit his historic uh, 152.2, a Japanese player, and that would like, like crush the category, I think, for a little while. But I think literally the very next day is when the glitch was discovered. And, um, you know, the, the battle here was so epic, it's so nostalgic thinking about this right now. Just seeing like a new time every single day by these players cutting it down further and further. And, um... Throw his this historic, humongous time that's so far ahead of his, of his days uh, way back in the day. And then the glitch was discovered the following day. The reason why it's a bit more significant is because back then, we only had the Nintendo Worldwide Top 10s. And that in and of itself is awesome, nostalgic having those. Um, but whenever a new glitch was discovered, um, the whole Top 10 was just uh, glitch times. And this is not a game like the newer Mario Karts where you can uh, manually select other, like, non roll record times and download their ghost um we actually can't do that in the mario Kart Wii nintendo uh top 10s so you would also lose like a lot of like the history behind like the actual top 10s they won't make any custom top 10s for the games and stuff like that so um it was unfortunate in that aspect but that was awesome i believe the player's name is daisy tantu and this player is awesome uh they made a lot of progress on daisy circuit in the very beginning uh, the battles here were always actually very fun to watch uh, from the sidelines, uh, me being a player back in the day. I believe this was his second to last world record he set on this track, I believe. And the world record now is obviously quite different. It's over two seconds faster, 128.4. And those things Funky Kong uses the mock bike. There are a lot of different MTs. There is hopping on the staircase and getting a stair dive. Um, a little wheelie ride to get a slip drift off the thing after the trick as well. But literally though, almost getting a 29 opener with going for almost no of the modern day strats in 2008. Insane, insane. I, I, I'm just, oh man, cause I, I recorded these times a little while ago. So um, even still, I like kind of forget what all these times really were as well. So it, it's just so crazy just to watch all these back again. Um, and also what I, what I would suggest you guys to do as well is when you're done with this, definitely check out the recent one that I did for the 2022, like heading into 2022 world records and seeing where they're at now is quite a glaring difference. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I just think it's cool just to see where things started out. Um, and this player in particular, uh, they never really gunned after any other track, but you're, you're going to notice too, there are a lot of players that don't play anymore that were literally just what's called a track specialist where they'll dedicate their sounds to, just to one track and nothing else. Um, and I feel like this game was really notable for that for many, many, many years as the game of purely track specialists. It wasn't until at least probably 2012, 2013 where there were like actual dominating players in the time trial scene for multiple tracks. Shout out to Aubrey, another former clan mate. Getting a 221 with the ancient Koopa Cape strats is nothing short of incredible in 2008. This track went through an insurmountable amount of strategy changes and every time something happened, it was groundbreaking and epic. Um, shout out to Cole as well because he really pioneered a lot of the newer strats on this track. Um, literally, we do that shroom cut shroomless now in modern day. And we save a mushroom for doing a pipe clip at the end and shrooming in the waterfall. But you can still drive some pretty impressive laps here with just a strategy as well. Um, other micro optimizations like the ramp into the river. Um, doing a wheelie off it is actually very slow. 
hopping on is actually quite a bit faster. Just small things like that. It's just funny to see what was known and try to optimize with the strategies that you know back in the day and seeing what's discovered many, many years later and see how people can optimize it in modern day. Um, the, 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 the battles here were always so cool as well. This is one of the more tricky tracks to play, in my opinion. Um, for a while, like as a beginner player, like some things on this track just really just don't make any sense, especially like how the river current works both here and in the pipe section. Um, but it's very rewarding to actually understand what's going on and set a pretty good time. Um, I think probably there's probably at least two major strategy changes in 2009, uh, including one shroom change. For a brief period of time, I believe Cole would actually use the shroom to skip the zipper ramp that's coming up over here, heading into the river. And um, I forget if he does like a modified shroom of strategy, I'm really not too sure. But Cole would do a shroom through that grass right over there and skip this ramp. Um, there's really a lot of really crazy strategies that were kind of uh, tampered with and discovered and implemented in this track's history specifically. So um, a lot of nostalgia as it is with all these tracks, obviously. Um, I forget if this was Aubrey's last record or not. I, he may have tried some of the newer strategies, at least in 2009, if my memory serves me right. Um, but yeah, Aubrey was uh, an epic track specialist, especially on this track. It was always epic to see uh, Aubrey um, come with these awesome new world records on Koopa Key. Very impressive. And that that's still a very solid time for a 1-1-1 shimmer through the shroomless cut grass in modern day. And now it's done in the first eight months of the game. So, shout out to Aubrey. Shout out to Shuto, 218-930 on Maple Tree, my favorite track. And this time really got me into uh, time trials on this track for my progress here eventually. And literally having a 218 and 2008 with the ancient 2008 strategies is sincerely insane. I'm biased, I know, but you have to admit that. He hits almost a 45 second lap with a one streamer in 2008 with no of the none of the modern day strats. It's, it's nothing short of incredible. Um, he really understood this part right here, the U-turn, more than any other player, especially back in the day. And I remember for me, on this track, I would race his ghost so many times. Um, this would try and mimic his inputs, and I still mimic his inputs today on the U-turn. Um, it's like the back and forth movement to do the actual U-turn, so that's successful. So, um, yeah, it's just... I'm just smiling ear to ear right now. This was such a magical time in the game's history. Um, this was Shuto's last world record here, if my memory serves me right. Um, we have the epic battles of, uh, shout out to my other clanmate as well, Lawrence. I believe he's a um, uh, from the Netherlands, I believe. Um, and also, um, Lawrence, I think Mepkanuzer is on this track. We had Shuto, we had uh, French player Luna, eventually Xenol, and also myself in that mix. So. Um, so many fun battles on this track. Um, this track is unrecognizable now in certain aspects where the roll record now is over four seconds faster with doing the, uh, the shroom turn skip now. But, um, dude, look at that, man. Almost a 45 second one shroomer in 2008 with the ancient strategies is really, really impressive. Um, and what's funny is that, you know, playing in vanilla Mario Kart Wii when you're racing a ghost, um, I believe you can see the player's name, but eventually it disappears if you're a little bit over a second out of their range. So I try so hard to get a PB where I can have Shuto's name displaying on the screen. And the first time I did that, my time was finally like a like a 220.1 or like a 219.9 or whatever. So um, I, I have the biggest nostalgia in particular on this track as well. So. Um, I still can't believe this, this this pure historic time he made in 2008. It's just silly just to watch a time like that because people struggle to get a 218 today with all the modern strats and he gets in the first eight months of the game. So very, very impressive. Shout out to Cole, by the way. Again, speaking of which from before, uh, Grumble Volcano, no glitch. As I alluded to earlier on Mushroom Gorge, Unfortunately, what happened was I believe both Grumble and Mushroom Gorge glitch was discovered almost right away when it was released. So trying to retroactively look for who had the fastest time for this category was 
very hard to do. Um, and, you know, modern day time trials here is very unrecognizable. It's almost, what is it now? Over five seconds faster, you know? Um, they do the um, the test strategy stream at the very end. Um, and that's a stream strategy. <laughs> Oh man, this is quite the... Oh, I think he's going for a fast slap. That's what he was doing. Yeah, so, um, you know, competing for like overall ranks and stuff for um, being on the leaderboards and stuff like that in the game on the players page. Um, it combines both your ranks on your three lap time and also your fast lap time. So I think literally this is Cole's just his fast lap attempt and then just driving out the rest of the run just to make a run and it was the fastest known time for the category at the time. So, um, you know, people wouldn't officially play this as a category, like, intently until, I don't know, at least 2010 to 2012-ish around there, I'm pretty sure. Um, oh, dude, it, it's just, oh, man. <laughs> Everyone was all about the glitch, and rightfully so, but um, this track is really hard to play. Um, especially all these little orange ramps he's tricking over right now. There are super crazy low like drifting tricks that they do now in modern day. Um, really, I would definitely recommend checking out the Mario Kart roll records site and viewing all the current roll records. Um, you will not regret that decision at all. Um, all the records today are so impressive. They're so strong in their own right. The state of the game is as strong as ever right now. And uh, the scene where it started out to where it is now is nothing short of insane and awesome. So, shout out to Cole. Um, again, as I mentioned, I probably wouldn't be until maybe three or four years after this time where people try to intently play this as an actual category. Um, but shout out to Sasuke uh, 20 uh, 010 on Grumble Glitch. And um, the battles here were epic. Uh, because Niaki was the titan presence and literally like someone would beat him and then he would beat him back the next day or like within like a week tops or whatever. So I believe it was Sasuke, it was King Alex, and maybe Chaos as well, who are like the main contenders that got the glitch here. But then Niaki would beat him back every single time. But uh, shout out to Sasuke. Um, it's funny because if he did the modern strategy with the shroom at the end, there probably would have been like a mid-19 probably, like no joke. But it's unrecognizable now. They use actually an inside drifting bike and they drift around the rock for several seconds faster. But um, yeah, head on the dry drive ruins. Shout out to Nova S, a legendary Japanese player, uh, most noble for his achievements here on dry drive ruins. And um, he was way ahead of his time here. Um, way before the modern shroom strategy was discovered now. Sorry for the background noise, by the way. Um, <laughs> All right, we have a lot of action out here today. All right. <laughs> um, the shroom strategy was a 1-1-1 shroom strategy. It was shrooming at the very end here. And even still, the wall glitch was known, believe it or not, in 2008. And um, Nova S was way ahead of his time here. Uh, in fact, he had one of the longest lasting world records at the time. It was really uncommon for a world record to last like two or three weeks or... Let alone, let alone like a month or so um, in the very beginning of the game like this. Um, a lot of you guys see now recently with the new DLC for Mario Kart Deluxe how how many times the, the world record can kind of turn over really rapidly when things are newly developing and discovered and, and released. And um, I believe uh, Nova S's best time, his last world record here, it lasted like almost four months. And that's a really long time for the game just starting and how popular this game was on release. Um, I would see now the roll record is multiple seconds faster. They use the quote unquote ultra shroom strategy where they shroom up from uh, exiting the tomb. They fly around the uh, sand over here behind the little pyramid thing. And uh, yeah, shout outs to uh, Tim, Timothy, by the way. I believe he was the first person to overtake Nova S and have a roll record with that shroom strategy. What's funny is that shroom strategy was only for fast laps back in the day. But I think it was actually Australian player Pyro as well, of old clan made of mine, and also um, UK player Timothy, where they kind of brainstormed some things, and then they um, they tried it in three lap world, uh, world record runs, and it was a lot faster. So, um, unrecognizable by today's standards, but legendary nonetheless. Shout out to Jacob as well. 
another former clan mate of mine. Um, he was an automatic master on Moonview Highway. He had quite the reign for a very long period of time. He was very ahead of his time when he started all of his developments here. And this was actually a spear automatic track. The roll record now is a, like a little bit over a second faster from what this is now with the Flame Runner. Um, what's a useful benefit of spear automatic is if you notice the little wheel wheelie nudges, um, he's not losing any speed at all. Uh, compared to if you do that in manual drift, you're actually losing a lot of time. And um, basically the benefit of this is you're able to maintain higher max speed with that that the spear has for a longer period of time. And honestly, a lot of this track is straight apart from the beginning here. And um, his dominance was overwhelming for quite a, a long period of time. Um, it won't be until I think it was what, 2009 or 2010 where eventually uh, Brett took over. And Brett honestly became like the best automatic player for like the, the longest time and had his supreme innovations on uh, Peach Gardens eventually too. And changed that track to automatic drift as well. So shout out to Brett for that. Um, I believe both Jacob and Brett had a mini exchange and then uh, Brett eventually took the torch after Jacob here. And um, I believe, uh, shout out to um, UK player Jazz Ahmed, a very talented player who really has so much potential, got a lot of good times, but I feel like he kind of quit the game earlier than he really should have. Um, I believe he had the world record here like at least once, I think as well, um, back in the day, like in 2009 or 2010. But um, yeah, you know, again, even in 2008, there are some common pace locks here, but he beats all the cars and stuff. Very, very impressive. Um, modern day is Flame Runner, manual drift, tripping, uh, tricking off the little trickable thing, all the optim optimization, stuff like that. We have Bowser's Castle, the legendary battles here. Um, definitely watch the most recent BC Wii, uh, most iconic world record video that I did. I did one on one of Brendan's 223s here with Rosa. Um, this has, if I had to pick any track for like nostalgia and like the most epic world record battles, it has to be on this track, I think. We had Brendan, we had Sro, we had Chelsea, like the whole mix there. Like, and eventually Zeke and everyone else, like this was such an awesome period of time for the game. Um, this is one of the hardest tracks in the game, the time trial. And what's funny is that it's Rosalina. So a couple of world records, they changed to Rosa. And there are a good amount of MTs on this track. And Rosa has um, better MTs than using Funky Kong. Um, and so they used it for a couple of times. And literally, Brendan got a 47.4 lap. Um, and it's 223, 7 to 8, I believe. I have that in the most iconic world record series as well if you guys want to check that out later on. Um, it's definitely worth the watch. Um, just that the exchange to back and forth was nothing short of truly incredible and just awesome because like I want the hardest tracks to learn and play um, to see people still gunning after uh, one uh, record after another like so quickly and everything was just so cool to watch. Um, Many different strategies they tried to do. They actually tried to do just two MTs in the spiral, not three at one point. Um, Chelsea tried to save a shroom into lap three to avoid the thwomp on lap two, as an example. Um, there are so many different things they tried to do for different pace locks and stuff too. When literally it's just fastest just to shroom around the thwomp and not really save it, you know? It's just kind of funny to kind of watch that in hindsight for the records on the line and stuff, you know? But um, still getting almost a 223 with what he tries to go for in 2008, just insane. Brendan in particular, like he, he just has some understanding of the game's mechanics more than most really early on. And um, I feel like he really deserves uh, far, more far more credit than he's gotten in the past. Um, Cause he was really like an overwhelming presence. Um, Cause he, he was the former number one overall time trialer for quite a bit. So um, it makes sense, obviously, you know, but um, I'll always smile, I'll always smile watching uh, the track progress there. Shout out to Cole, legendary 23622. I believe this was the first time that beat uh, Sro here and changed this track permanently to a flame runner track before it eventually was changed to a carding track, believe it or not. Just the fact that he got this in 2008 
Nothing short of sincerely impressive. Cole is really known as the man for many like innovations in the game. Not just this game, but a lot of other Mario Karts as well. He's had world records and multiple Mario Karts, and he's been a top level carter for uh, other Mario Karts too as well. And uh, this game is definitely no exception to that as well. Um, just as Moo Moo Meadows, honestly speaking, like when this was the spear to try and do this, it's so hard to do this track with the spear. Especially after the cannon, the little like anti grab like turn section there. Um, literally, uh, Sro, a Japanese player Sro, would do like a tricking turn with the spear. And that was like the hardest thing to do ever. And uh, everyone struggled, including myself. And then Cole is the beacon of light and shows that the Flame Runner is very viable and makes it far easier to play this track. Um, but it's just so funny that eventually the fastest combination humanly to really practically use ends up being the cart a couple years later. But the best bike time before it turned to a cart track was in the 227 range, so um, around three seconds was chopped off at this time. Um, Cole would come back, he has some historic subs. I think he was the first to sub both 230 and 229. And Cole implemented all these strategies, and then he um, implemented the um, the shrooming uh, moon jump at the very beginning of the track. Which back then kind of perplexed me a lot of players because it's like, you're in airtime for a lot of period of time, but there's so many boosts going down, so how is that exactly faster? But um, it's just a matter of like trying to avoid um, parts of like it's called sticky road that kind of sticks you down in these downward sloping sections. Um, in recent day, uh, Wario's Goldmine is a great example with all the turn skips that's done there to avoid sections like that. Um, but yeah, like, through and through, like, Cole has been one of the major pioneers on the RTA side of things, really pushing the bounds, and uh, just overall shout out to Cole, because this is uh, almost a 49 second lap as well with these strats in 2008. It's nothing short of incredible. So, amazing stuff. To the retros. Not many of you know. Most of you know Xeno for his Maple Tree Way battles with me on Maple Tree Way back in the day. But he also had his battles here on Peach Beach. Uh, with him, uh, I believe Dutch player Vincent. Um, who else was there? Uh, uh, Jaws as well. Um, maybe one or two other notable players back in the day that were exchanging this time back and forth. But um, Xeno started out as a spear main pretty much. He almost had the world record. Wait, well, yeah, I know. I think he actually did have world record on uh, Peach Gardens as well uh, at some point. Um, so he was very good on the spirit tracks before he eventually um, tried to uh, do everything on Maple Tree Way. So um, yeah, it's just so funny just to watch what these strategies are now because the world record is like around two seconds faster now. They do some optimizations of the shrooms, the turns before the cataquacks, doing the the spin drift to the right of the red one on lap three. There's so many different things now. But um, the battles here were always so awesome. Oh, one other player also shouts to a uh, German player, uh, Degosser, an old clanmate of mine from Star Dashers back in the day. He also had his hands in the mix here for um, Peach Peach. So it's trade hands a lot of times. It was so fun to watch the battles here back in the day. Shout out to Xenal here. Did I mention track specialist in this video? This guy is the epitome of a track specialist. The man gets a 59.4 in 2008 on Yoshi Falls. The world record has been improved by less than one second off this time in over 13 years. He, he, he embodies what being a track specialist is. Um, I believe actually Yoshi Falls um, is the track that has had the least amount of world records out of all the tracks in the game. Only like 30-ish or 40 at max, I'm pretty sure. And this dude was way ahead of his time. He had his legendary, uh, was quote unquote omega-ing omega a time, which is getting a like a 59 flat or like anything with 0-0-0 at the end. 
he had concluded with a 59-0-0-0, I think at the beginning of 2010. And it wouldn't be until like 2013 or 2014 where Cole actually beat him with a new um, main turbo strategy into the Shroom. With a 58-9-70, I believe. Um, Omega was just on some other level. He had like a mid to high 59 second time in 2009 with the Flame Runner as well. He was the true embodiment of what a track specialist is. Bring it back to Keone again, GV2. And he really like took the developments on GV2 and advanced him and pioneered a lot of strats here. Um, I don't know if it was him that initially implemented the new shroom strategy here of uh, doing the shroom and doing the trick, but um, the battles here were awesome. Keone, Alvin, I believe the Japanese player's name was Mouse, I believe, where it was epic. So. Um, each time he got the world record, uh, I believe the Japanese player Mouse, he would change his me name to the splits of his world record run and then upload the uh, world record with that me on the charts. So it was like 937, 84, 80 or whatever. It was like the coolest thing ever. Um, of course, we had a Suryu as well, uh, Kenny, uh, other notable players as well. Um, the progress here was always so fun to watch. And um, a mid-53 is still very good for today's standards. Um, it's almost a second faster now. It's just more optimized. Uh, soft drifting, double MTs, optimized shroom, everything else. So uh, very, very epic. Shoutouts to Alvin. He was really like the first overwhelming presence for like multiple track domination in 2008. Another former number one overall time trialer. And Alvin was way ahead of his time, especially in the very beginning of the game. I think he had a world record on almost half the tracks, I believe, uh, back in the day. And um, he really pioneered a lot of strats too. And I really feel like he was like one of the first players back in the day to really like embody like the grind mentality where like he would grind so much for his times. And it honestly motivated me back in the day as a new player in 2008 to like not throw in a towel too soon with like learning like a new track or just getting better at the game overall. Um, so I was personally very inspired by him. I remember um, when I tried to join the players page in like September 2008, I saw all the players and all the nationalities and stuff. I'm like, I'm like it's so cool that like you're so connected to all the players throughout the world like this. And um, I saw he was number one and I'm like, wow, I, I can never be any of Alvin's times ever, no matter how much I try. Um, and I'm smiling because just it, I, I remember my mindset, my reaction like that, and everything I've been able to do since then, um, it, it's just insane. Um, Alvin's understanding of game tech as well was very, very advanced, and he adapted really quickly to a lot of different changes um, in the landscape that was overturning quickly every single day. Getting a 142 with the super ancient strats, taking the ramp as well, very ancient strats too. Um, both, both myself and Doom discovered the faster strategy of skipping the ramp entirely for roll record runs. Um, the roll record now is almost two seconds faster, so 141.1. They do a double pipe trick, they do skipping the ramp as well, double MT on the U-turn too, a lot more optimizations, but this is a very awesome time to watch nonetheless. So, Again, Alvin, you're gonna see his name a couple more times in this video on Sherbet Land. I probably get the most nostalgia for Alvin when I watch him on Sherbert Land. Um, at least for me, like, Sherbert Land was very, very tricky to learn uh, back in the day. And he made this track look so effortless. I really can't believe he got literally close to a 204. Um, <laughs> literally in, uh, in 2008. I, I, just, I just can't believe it, honestly. Um, I really wish like people were like more in tune to like taking pictures of like what the worldwide top tens were, what the regional top tens were back in the day, just to kind of preserve our history. Um, thank goodness we have all that we have now and what people still would do back in the day. But um, there are so many other like cool names and all these tracks that um, you otherwise may not know about unless you really play it back in the day. Um, I think actually, uh, you're gonna see him up next, uh, Japanese player Tyrera. I think he actually had the roll record here at least once or twice, I think. 
Um, eventually, uh, Epic American player Flame took over on this track too and really pushed the bounds. Eventually, uh, Japanese player Ken as well really took the torch here and pushed things uh, way down the line. Um, the current roll record now is um, a little bit over one and a half seconds faster than this. It's a 203 750 by Sosis. And um, a lot of more optimizations of how to actually take the crack turns here. Taking the shroom better, getting more chain wheelies, more optimized software thing in the cave too. Um, a little tech that people may not know is literally you can like try and take up a chunk far more than you can actually do. It almost looks like you're driving straight off the track on the cracks, but right before you leave the track, you counter steer the other way to uh, shift over the, to the track and get on the other side. That's how the players these days do that giant shimmy and cut a huge part of the gap off. But with what he does here, he cuts a very, very small amount off. But um, everything he goes for, that's a very, very impressive time for the standards of 2008. Way ahead of his time, very clearly. But um, yeah, that is Sherbet Land. Um, as I alluded to earlier, Tyrera 122.970 on Shy Guy Beach. This is a historic time. The most nostalgic battle being Tyrera and Flame back to back, um, back and forth with Magic Cruiser on this track. This is a spear track now. Um, the roll record is about a second and a half faster uh, in modern day. But this time trial was so unique where um, the Magic Cruiser has off-road benefit and you're just ignoring most of the mainland. You're just driving purely in the water. And um, eventually there are some optimizations for this character and this combination where you would actually do um, the Spirit does the low trick on the pink ramp. Eventually, the Magic Cruiser would do that as well. What's funny is that, um, shout out to our French player Mick, he actually changed his track to a Spear track, but then it changed back to a Magic Cruiser track because the Magic Cruiser saw, oh, you're tricking on that ramp, I'm gonna trick on that too. So there are more optimizations there, I believe. Um, Jorge, Spanish player Chima as well, um, they were notching the time lower, lower, and lower into like the low 122s. And eventually French player Rom, the spear god, spear time trial god Rom, shout out to you if you're watching. Um, he took the torch and permanently made this track into a spear track. So um, the this is one of the most iconic rivalries and battles exchanges between Tyrera and Flame. It was like one of the most epic things to watch. Um, definitely one of my more fondest memories of watching the um, the forums and stuff with new roll records uh, every couple of days on this track with the both of them playing that track too, so Very awesome to watch that back for sure Now we head on to Delfino Square again Alvin is back in action and uh, This track has had a lot of optimizations um, How long ago was it? It was probably close to a year ago now where uh, very big changes happened to the track, but before then um the roll record was improved by over two seconds to a 204, 208, I believe, by Luke, without any like huge strategy changes. In modern day now, they do the, what's called the shroomless dock cut, where the dock where he's ignoring right now, you do a shroomless wheelie over the gap, um, and you save a lot of time doing that. But um, back in 2008, obviously, that's not known, you know? Um, they don't know how to hop drift trick on the ramps and stuff. Um, no, like, really, like, long, like, delayed tricks for lower air time. Um, again, also credits to Alvin, too, for, uh, his video as well. I put all the credits for all the ones that I can record myself in this video. Um, one unfortunate thing, obviously, it's nostalgic to have, like, the original Ghost replay, but it's also just kind of unfortunate where they didn't include the um, the HUD on top of like the shrooms, the timer, the lap, the mini map, stuff like that. So um, literally it was, check this out. So back in the day, to figure out what your splits were, if you didn't write them down, you had to race a ghost and then go into all three laps, write down your lap, write down the lap difference and reverse out the math for all three laps. And that's how you will find out what the splits in your run were. Because back then there's no CDGP, there's no way to extract the RKG ghost data and read that as well, and it automatically spits out the laps or whatever else. So um, it, it was just so different back in the day. And I feel like just having like that, 
the charm of not having all those advancements was still cool, you know? Um, this was my favorite time in the game. <clears throat> From 2008 to like 2011 or so, I feel like it's like the golden era of the game with like all these players here and just what was known, what we tried to do, it was just great, so. I was, you know, double MT, but the end of the bridge, um, trying to make the bridge cycles, no soft drifting, so far different than today. Shout out to Ender as well on Waluigi Stadium. Uh, my former clanmate, uh, Rocky Light from Evil as well. Uh, we had, let's see, a Tatsuya. We had Totom. A lot of other players eventually with some awesome battles on this track too. This was one of the most epic tracks. This is going to be one of the ones that's very entertaining because a lot of strategies are different. Um, that beginning drift, they only go for one zipper and not two. It makes running that bend easier, but it's a lot slower. Um, the turn skip was not known. Um, that car is very fast outside. Sorry about that. Again, it's uh, midday here recording. Um, there's no drifting load trick at the end of the lap, um, but at least what was known is doing a down trick into the wall bounce is faster. So basically you're kind of abusing like the, uh, the momentum of the type of boost that you're doing. So you kind of like halfway through like your uh, down flip animation where the, um, the ending part is flipping your bike back and that's like propelling you forward on the wall pretty much. Um, but doing these little mini wheelies on the zipper is actually a lot harder than it seems. Uh, players still struggle with it to this day. Um, and this is one of the most technique heavy tracks in the game uh, to learn, uh, as we all may know at this point. Um, but yeah, they still managed a, a 152 in 2008. And uh, Ender was another prime example of an epic track specialist. And um, he was passionate to the cause in this track for quite a while. Um, but the battles here were really epic. It was so fun to watch all the progress. Again, him, Tatsuya, Japanese player Tatsuya, uh, Rocky Light, eventually Totom, uh, other players too. Uh, Japanese player Buster, he never got the world record, but he's high on there as well. Um, a lot of notable players um, in the mix. So. Um, yeah, now the world record here is over four seconds faster. Um, this track is glitched now as well. So um, a lot of things have changed for sure. Desert Hills by Australian player Ryan. This is also another epic track for activity. The, um, the shortcut wasn't known. This track was a spear track for the longest time. We had Ryan, Japanese player Veyu. We had King Alex. All the main players here just exchanging hands back and forth um, for the fastest world record here with the spear. And um, this track is very hard to play with the spear. This this turn in particular, and then the Sherman, the final turn, is one of some of the hardest stuff to do with the spear. And King Alex, Veyu, Ryan, all three made it look so effortless back in the day to uh, get these times. It wouldn't be until my uh, uh one of my best friends in the community doom he changed his track to a flame runner track but i believe it's still technically fastest to use a spear here um what's funny is that after doom got the world record um i forgot who beat him first actually it might have been cole cole changed the track back to a spear track temporarily and got the first 134 here then it eventually went back to a flame runner track but um yeah, like this is such a hard track to play with the spear just for mostly the ending part of the run. But um, seeing all the exchanges here was so epic. Um, King Alex really got his start here and also on Grumble Volcano, like both these two tracks at the same time. Uh, King Alex, one of the most talented divers players that ever graced our community, has so many awesome roll records and many different tracks. Um, I believe Ryan was one of those track specialists. And then Vey was also another wonderful multi-talented player with getting many top level times and roll records on many different tracks in the game too. So a lot of very rich and deep history on this track as well. I need some water. I've been talking for almost an hour straight. Uh, give me one moment here. <laughs> My man Doom, BC3, no shortcut, 219. And uh, Doom was a major pioneer of the track really optimizing and pushing this time he was competing against um sand my sand he went by quote unquote horse face or what his uh me name looked like um 
The exchange that Doom and Samusan had on the shortcut side was awesome. Just as, you know, uh, Mushroom Gorge and Gravel Volcano went, um, there was no, like, official, like, tracking of, like, world record history for the no shortcut side of things for quite a while. Um, but even still, uh, Doom will play all these categories anyway at baseline, and, uh, he thankfully recorded it. So, um, yeah, now, modern day, the world record is about over three seconds faster now. Um, the low tricks are more optimized. The wheelies are instant for uh, boost preservation. The shroom is more optimized. They do soft drifting now. They have faster MT building speed in and out of the turns. Um, they do a drifting low trick on the zipper ramp now as well. So um, a lot of things have changed for sure. But um, honestly, in my uh, series, um, I do a series called the Online Time Trial Lounge, where it's a custom game mode, believe it or not. Shouts to Melg for pioneering that game mode. And uh, it's literally a, a a competitive one try time trial game mode online. And um, everyone is a ghost, it's one try. And you see who gets to the finish on the fastest, he's following with three shrooms, the whole thing. And so getting a 219 for this in an online TT event today is still very solid. And Doom gets this in 2008. One thing I want to highlight too that I kind of uh, brush over before is along with more optimizing of the low tricks and the wheelies and stuff, Doom purposely skips the low jump there. If you notice too, he's not doing any wheelies at all in between the platform jumps. That helps you so much to preserve your trick speed to have enough speed as to when you're doing a low trick on the yellow ramp, you're not falling too short into the lava. Um, how people fail today is if they don't get a wheelie out or it's too late and they also um like really have like a really good quote unquote time of the hop on the ramp but it's actually too low they fall too short so he would purposely, purposely skip that this is a highlight of this video in my opinion this is nothing short of insane japanese player key the world record history for this track on shortcut is epic the old shortcut is doing the old legendary platform shortcut on the last ramp. Eventually, one day, he rolls up with a world record that does this. And forever revolutionized shortcut category of BC. Instantly, we all started scrambling how to actually do this thing. It's very, very hard with the Flame Runner. Eventually, we actually go to Mock Bike to make it a lot easier to do it and to have a recovery drift afterward. Almost a 39 second lap one in 2008. Like, what? That's insane. Um, and so Key rolls up and does this out of the blue. It's actually insane. But um, what's even more insane is he actually goes for it twice in this run. And he gets it. And so he beat Samusan's former world record by over one second. He had a very good mid 202.5, I think. And then Key has a 201.3. And uh, the battles here were awesome. I believe uh, Trent Easton, Japanese player, got his first world record here. Um, this actually, another Japanese player, I forgot his name. He got the world record with three for three here with the bullet bike, uh, believe it or not. Um, and then eventually it was like a mock bike track and then Bubbles was here, Choi, Doom, all the gang was here. And uh, yeah, this was so just absolutely insane. Um, by the way, he actually does a three for three. So it's discovered, I think by him, if my memory serves me right, absolute chat of the world goes for a three for three. He could have easily just had the 40.1 opener and then the normal cut laps two and three and still beat Samusan. But he just full scented 2008, three for three, world record, bang. Insane. Just recording this and watching it again, I still can't believe this actually happened back then. And I'll say when it happened, so insane. Shouts again to Yasha, Canadian player. We talked about him on Coconut Mall. The battles here were also quite epic. I think we had Yasha, we had Japanese player Veyu, we had Brendan in the mix too. A lot of awesome players were battling on this track. Yasha in particular was way ahead of his time. 
uh, Coconut Mall and this track. Um, I think Brendan was in like the trifecta of the of the mix here uh, during this time, but eventually it turned into the uh, the Veyu and the Yasha show. I believe Russo had one world record here at least. Uh, I think also Spanish player Kraken had one record here. I might be wrong on that one, but I know Russo at least had one here. I think in early 2009 as well. Um, but I'm pretty sure after like like a mid 213, it was just Veyu and Yasha going after it. And literally um, Yasha got like a mid 212.5 in like mid to late 2009. And my own PB doesn't even beat that 13 years later, just for some context here. Of course, the landscape has changed now. The world record is over two seconds faster. They do a little turn skip here on the first turn over here. They uh, do the mushroom a lot better and just more optimized driving. Um, you know, you may think, how are these laps like so much slower than modern day? But really it's just about refinery of your MT building abilities uh, main throw the wheelie uh, speed, um, committing to your alignment um, out of a turn. But you might not notice a small detail is his bike was buckling on the shroom lap too. Basically, his bike was bracing into the dirt and slowing down and then shrooming. That's a lot slower. A little bit safer of a way to just guarantee you make the shroom in some instances, but. Um, the strategy is to make that shroom better now. I found out the secret sauce in my experimentation when I got my PB about a year ago. You have to shroom right before the line in the dirt. You have to shroom right before you start slowing down into the mud. And um, it's a bit more risky, but it's way, way faster. But um, yeah, this is notorious for having one of the most annoying shrooms being this one because not many people know how to do it properly, and myself included for the longest time. But um... The battles here are nothing short of awesome, epic, incredible, as with all of these are. And um, I would say the glitch was not known. We're here now on GC and Mario Circuit, legend of the world, Javanese player Alves. And Alves had his grand start to the scene on GC and Mario. He was the epitome of a track specialist as well. He was battling mostly with a UK player Tim for the longest time here. Um, Eventually, Owls would move on from this track and throw in the towel, and he would move on to GC and DK Mountain and has some very awesome progress there. This track is a little bit unrecognizable now where a couple of strategies have changed, but um, even still, this was still a very impressive time back in the day. The sheer instance of a double trick on that little man, by the way, Almost no one really knew how to do it. The secret sauce is just hopping when you trick. And you get that springy first jump. And then eventually if you time it really good and you hold your analog the right way, you get a very fast double trick going down. But for the longest time as a new player, for months on end, I didn't know how to get a double trick. I was just getting a single trick. I tried spamming my D-pad so many times, would just get one dumb trick, nothing else would happen. And you just have to hop, uh, uh, hop and trick at the same time. That's all you gotta do. But Alice was definitely one of the inspirations uh, for me here on this track. Um, eventually, Chaos would take over. Uh, shout out to American player Chaos. You're gonna see him more in the uh, future world record reviews that I do for multiple years, 2009, and so on and so forth. Um, Chaos would take over the torch. I'll get the world record here. They would beat me back. A lot more battles here. Um, the world record now is over two seconds faster. It's by Luke. It's very optimized. It's very strong. But um, shout out to Owls, man. He's one of my most uh, inspirational players from back in the day that really inspired me to play this track eventually. So, Moving on to the last cup, we have Unreal Legendary UK player. Another track specialist, and um, believe it or not, people had a 118 on MC3 in 2008. The world record is a little bit over a second faster now, 13 years later, but with new strats. If he had the same strats as this run, the world record was only improved by 0.8, I believe. Um, no one has ever subbed 118 with the double MT strategy. Um, it wouldn't be until the triple MT was introduced where um, 
That was first discovered with uh, ja um, with a Spanish uh, Tasser uh, MK Dasher. Shout out to Dasher, by the way. The absolute legend of the world at MKDS, but also had his foots here in Mario Kart Wii 2. Um, he made a task of this track. I believe it was him. And he did a triple MT on that curve. And for the longest time, we really thought that that was like um, just task exclusive, far too hard of a strategy. But um, absolute champion of the world, one of the best players to ever play this game, a UK player, Luke. Shout out to Luke. He learned the triple MT strategy, did the first 117 here. But um, the battle of uh, Unreal, uh, I believe it was Tatsuya too as well, that battled him back and forth here. Um, also MVT as well, American player MVT. Uh, the battles here were awesome. I believe Unreal eventually um, converted from g sync controller to the Wiimote and Nunchuck to uh, compete more effectively here. And that was awesome, like in 2009, 2010. So I still can't believe they got that time uh, back in 2008. Shout out to another clan of mine, Jaws, EV Rage, uh, Peach Gardens. Uh, Jaws was really uh, very good in the online scene, but he was a time trial specialist, uh, most notably on this track. And uh, also on uh, Peach Beach too. <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking for over an hour. Uh, please, uh, excuse me. So the strategies here are very unrecognizable to modern day. Modern day, we use automatic drift as a 158, but um, both Jaws and Xenal will be the ones duking it out. Also, uh, Dutch player Vincent as well was in the mix for a period of time. The battle here was awesome between Jaws and, um, and Xenal. Eventually, Bubbles would take over the scene, take on the torch, do a couple new strategies. Eventually, uh, Brett would further super revolutionize the track to automatic drift, the legendary landmark 159 sub on this track. Eventually, it will go back to Spear Manual, and then eventually back to Spear Automatic. So, uh, many, many, many changes flip-flopping flip -flopping back and forth for many years on this track. Um, but literally, Jaws was the master of doing that strategy. Um, literally, you can do that with the Spear very easily, where um, I think you actually, like, you release your drift, but uh, redo your drift and turn the opposite way at the same time. And um, he was doing that back in 2008 consistently. So uh, a lot of people sleep on Jaws as a as a player, but he was really, really good. And this time is very impressive for a strat side he goes for. I believe it was actually uh, Omega from Yoshi Falls that actually discovered the current um, manual head strategy of going to the right instead of the left there. Um, but yeah, probably not many of you actually know that this was the, uh, the strategy going all the way to the left like that back in the day. Um, there's no Superman wheelie off the staircase at the end here. There's no double empty here in the, in the mole section as well. There's no wheelie shrimp at the very beginning. So a lot of things have changed. But uh, look at that. He he really probably almost could have gotten a two minute time actually if he had a better ending here. But uh, yeah, the battles here were so awesome. And Jaws was honestly very ahead of his time here for both here and also Peach Beach as well back in the day. DK Mountain, the second to last track here. Japanese player Nave was the one that really full sent things. Um, he was also another Supreme Track Specialist back in the day. This track is most known for during this period that eventually Japanese player Biohazard would be Nave here with a cart. There were no cart wall records, it was just all bikes at this point almost a year later. And Biohazard would be Nave with the cart um, with the Wild Wing. But um, again, this track, as I mentioned with a lot of tracks, but you guys have seen now, very unrecognizable in today's standards. They shroom there too as well. Now in modern day, they do the full wheelie scooping mountain strategy after the cannon. They use a mushroom on the bridge. That double hop is so useless and makes it so much harder. Um, I forgot who was the one that actually just did like one hop and made it so much easier um, in a sequence of things. But um, there's no MT here up to the, um, this turn as well. Um, the roll record now is uh, a 204.7 by Logan, so it's like, what, over four or five seconds faster now? But, um, yeah, obviously the glitch was not known here. As you guys may have noticed a trend here, um, almost all major shortcuts and glitches still weren't known in 2008. It was just BC3 shortcut, Mushroom Gorge, and Grumble Volcano glitch around the rock. So, uh, yeah. 
but hopefully you guys have been enjoying this so far just to uh really like um chill out and just really see the the uh, origin story of a lot of these tracks here especially with the strategies that were known and not known back in the day um you can only optimize what you know um and it took some many talented players to try to experiment push the bounds and um and you know just to try to progress our game further um huge shout outs to our task community because from maybe like 2010 and onward the task community has sincerely has been probably the biggest players in the sense of like really pushing our game for discovering new glitches shortcuts optimizing game mechanics um helping the rt community how to do certain strats all the above so shout out to all of you guys um but yeah that's dk mountain and lastly former clanmate of mine as well on evil shiki aka seth the battles here were epic we had uh seth we had frenchy we had maguru we had brendan um and then eventually this turned to a mock bite track with brendan and rusalex and noblo and with the shroom strategy change where they don't shroom at the beginning they shroom um after the staircase then eventually cole saw the back to a funky flame track i beat cole rocky light there's marco there's nagiza i came back and then this just kept on going further and further and further so um there's no drifting on the little uh wooden bridge there um honestly getting the perfect clean hop on the top before the staircase is actually very hard um but keep watching the hardest thing back in the day doing this track is the ending here look at what seth does here Check this out. He does one hard right drift. Now, I cannot begin to tell you how frustrating and how hard that was and still is if you try to do it that way. The technique spin drifting was not known back in the day. Um, one of the first things that uh, made that far easier um, out, um, was after spin drifting was discovered. And you could spin drift the last turn and take it super tight and almost never hit the wall ever again. Literally, so many people were so good at this track, myself included, but we all kept on failing in runs because of the very ending railing uh, corner cut. So if you notice closely, what Seth really tries to do is he tries to have an alignment almost hitting the little hut on the left-hand side, as far left as possible, and then cuts in really hard and tries to hit the little, um, uh, angle in between the two uh, brick walls and try and use that to kind of glide back on the track and not hurl and bounce into the wall. It looks simple what he does, but you try it and you're going to hit the wall more than half the time. I'm telling you. So, um, but yeah, shout out to uh, Shiki, aka Seth. He also had his um, progress on BC Wii back in the day as well. But um, yeah, guys, thank you for watching this. Uh, I love doing these analyzing, reacting series. I get very nostalgic, but this is like the most nostalgic I've ever been with the game in quite some time. So if you've enjoyed this, definitely give me a like, get subscribed to the channel as well. Um, a lot more cool content is on the way. I'm going to do every single gear from 2009 and onwards with this. If you really enjoyed this, I recommend checking out here to look at the 2022 reaction. It's well worth your while. A lot of the new glitches are there from modern day. And also check this out as well, being the uh, Zeke, um, the Enigma, the history of the most iconic world record on that track of a 220-672. Thank you so much. Take care and peace.